Welcome back. We're now going to take a look at our next advanced statistical tool. This is regression analysis. Now regression is using the same sum of squares calculation that we saw in ANOVA. And we saw that ANOVA is actually an expansion of the two-way hypothesis test, where we have a two-sample t-test. So two-sample t-test from multiple samples goes into ANOVA. It's analyzed with sum of squares, and the same sum of squares calculations are used in a different way to figure out what is the average between all of the different subgroups that we're seeing in terms of the data. It's used to fit lines and curves to data. So in this fitted line, we see that we actually quantified the relationship between the process variables, the x's, and the performance variables, or the output variable, y. And it helps identify which then are the vital x's, which ones have a high, oh, excuse me, a low p-value, and therefore are statistically significant. This allows us to make predictions about processes because we have a formula, and we can extrapolate using that formula. It also identifies the impacts of these x's or the controlling variables in terms of the process. So because we get the equation out of this line, we can do different things with it. So there's three fundamental objectives that we can have in doing a regression analysis. The first is we can use it for exploring data. Which of the factors we can throw them all in have a high p-value, or excuse me, a low p-value, but high significance, when it comes to uh, their contribution to the overall variance? We can use it for specification. We'll see this in the control phase, where we can actually specify the 95% confidence interval we would like to keep for performance of a particular equation. We can use it also in terms of estimation. What do we think the performance should be under certain circumstances, bounded by the range of the data that we've seen? So the applications are prediction, control, and then inverse estimation. If I have an x, what would be the y? If I have a y, what would be the x under those sorts of control conditions? Now, what does this output actually look like? Well, we see that what we've got is we're going to be building the data up from a series of observations. So in the graphic here, we see red dots and we see a blue dot. The red dots are the original data. And so we see that this, this blue line here is the best fit of the data. This is where the sum of squares is minimized for all of the observed data. Now, the blue dot here is the predicted place that we would get for an equation when y is equal to 90, or x is equal to 90. And what we see is that the observed value, red, much higher, is the observed data point, and that's my yi, okay? So the difference is, the difference between the mean, so we see the average, y bar, minus yi hat, that's a little triangle over the top, that's a predicted data point based on the equation. So the residual is the amount of difference yi minus yi hat. It's this amount of data above the line that we don't explain by the equation that we have. The amount of data that we have explained is the difference between the mean and the actual line that we have, the blue dot. That we've been able to explain. So this blue line is actually what we call the regression line. This is the prediction that we would have given this set of observed data, what the central tendency is, for all of the observed x's in terms of the y. Now, when we put this into Minitab, we get out a certain input. So below the top, we see we can have a fitted line plot, and here is my equation. So 11.03 is the y-intercept, and the slope of the line is 1.095, I believe. My glasses aren't on, so I can't tell for sure, but you might be able to read that better than me, okay? Now, what we see is, this line pivots right around the center, okay? That is the average for the y and the x. Both of these are observed. And we see that this, these red lines, which are called the 95% confidence interval, those are the confidence intervals for this prediction line, okay? And so the prediction line is this center line in the process. That's a plotted line of the regression equation. And so what I've done is I've taken and I've rotated around the center point two blue lines. And they go from the minimum to the maximum, and then they rotate from the maximum to the minimum between the two lines. That's the amount of uncertainty in terms of the regression equation. So what we see is that the equation is somewhere in there to a 95% confidence interval. Now, the other thing to see is there's also a green dashed line further out. 
and this is the prediction interval for the next data point. And the idea here is if I was to have another data point, and let's say that the data point is 90, where would I expect that 90 to be? And the answer is I'd be 95% confident it's somewhere between, it looks like to me, about 85 and about 125. Okay, and so that's the confidence that I have in terms of an individual data point where it should be located. The other thing we see is there's something called the coefficient of determination, or R squared. And R squared, there are two of them here. So we see what is this, the standard deviation, what is the R squared, and then what is R squared adjusted. Now what I want you to realize is R squared continues to rise as we add more and more terms to the equation. R squared adjusted will max out when those terms are no longer adding new information about the amount of variation we see in the process. And so we will use R squared to determine what is the goodness of fit for all of the data. So we look at R squared adjusted and it says it's explaining 50.6% of the data. I don't know about you, but to me, a prediction that's only explaining 50%, it's like flipping a coin. That's not really good enough. For Greenbelt, we'd like to see you get R squared adjusted above 80%. And then we have a pretty good idea of what's happening in the process. Of course, if it goes much higher than that, much better knowledge, and that's going to be a better solution for us. We also see in Minitab that we can get some other information out. So here's a more comprehensive analysis of the data. And here what we see, we get the equation. So it says here is the overall equation. And now it's different than the other one because we've added more factors. So we see I have a constant, so the constant is the y-intercept, and then I have three factors, and we see this middle one, the p-value is 0.751. So what we did in the other analysis was we reduced the model, we removed this. When it was 0.751, we saw that it, the r-squared is 74, and r-squared adjusted was 70. And so it has a better predictor, but it, it's got this one factor in there that's not contributing anything to our knowledge. So if we reduce that, we see that the regression analysis of variance for the regression equation, it was statistically significant, the p-value is 0.005. But if we see that we have these, these two different factors here, so we see the, fiber, uh, the first factor is contributing 1439 to the sum of squares, and the second one, 1312. Now we'll take a look at this when we do our, our exercise, and we'll see when we remove that, that 1312 goes away. It's already been explained. And so we'll have a better explanation of variation. Now, there are certain things we can do to improve the quality of a regression analysis. So sometimes what we can do is replicate the Y. And what that means is for each X, take more than one Y measurement. And that way we'll gain a better understanding of the overall error in the system. Is it consistent at each of those levels? Another thing we can do is decrease the spacing in the x's. And then we'll increase the understanding of the linearity or the degree of linearity of the process. We can replicate uh, the x measures and that helps to see curvature. So that means we take more than one x measure at each time. The other thing we can do is we can concentrate data observations at the two ends. And you notice how this was data tends to be pinched around the center because that's where we have the most data. And then it spreads out towards the end because we have the least data out there. But if we take more data at the end, what happens is that confidence interval will decrease and become much more linear. Okay. And, and so this will actually help us to get a better independent error of the measurement variation. Because at the middle of the line where we see that, that's an indicator of how much measurement variation we have or the error that's built into the model. Okay, so what we've seen so far is that regression can be used for estimation, can be used to identify factors. It can also then provide us with some input in terms of understanding how much variability we have left yet to explain. What we'll see is after we go through our Minitab analysis of regression, we will then come back to this question of residuals analysis. What can we learn and how can we improve the knowledge that we get out of Minitab to make an even better estimate of what's going on in our process?